It says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams arose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell with a great crash. For the sake of time, I only want to deal with two of these verses. That's verses 24 and 25. And it said, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. I want to talk for just a few minutes from the subject, thank God I'm still standing. I believe you ought to just give God praise right there. Cause I'm sure the devil gave you his best shot. I wish I had a witness right there, but you ought to thank God you're still standing. Just a few years ago, I took a well-needed vacation to San Juan, Puerto Rico. And every now and then I have flashbacks of the Marriott San Juan Resort. And I love this resort because this resort came with an oceanfront view. Uh -huh. And brothers and sisters, when I think of my time in San Juan, I think of things like sunny skies and sandy beaches and kids building sand castles, surfboards and waves running up the shoreline, families having afternoon picnics. The scenery is perfect in San Juan, Puerto Rico. But I have to admit, the best part of my beach experience was enjoying the breeze and watching the palm trees swing from side to side. I look at the palm tree and see how tall it was. I, I, I look at the palm tree and see how green the leaves were. I look at the palm trees and watch it dance all night and all day. Yeah. But during my stay, I learned something unique about the palm tree. Yeah. I learned that when a storm comes and the wind treats the horizon and waves it back and forth, the palm tree may bend, but it won't break. In other words, the palm tree remains rooted until the storm passes. And I don't know who this word is for this morning, but God is looking for Christians who can remain rooted during tough seasons. Yes, and I know we're in a tough season right now. People are dying from COVID-19, coronavirus. Millions of people are unemployed across our nation. Financial hardship is beginning to be a way of life. Academic achievements cannot be celebrated in a deserving way. Church has went from victorious corporate worship to virtually connected worship. Brothers and sisters, we are in a tough season right now. But just like the palm tree, God has made you to weather the storm. Because, brothers and sisters, you may bend but it won't break. And I felt my head right there because uh, there have been times where I wanted to break and go 
drove me into town and waved the white flag of surrender. Okay, y'all gonna leave me out there by myself, but I'm sure there have been times during your Christian run where you wanted to give up. Uh, uh, it's easier standing. It's, it's easier giving up the Bible and throwing away the Bible. We're standing. We're giving up standing easier than lifting up your hands. Uh, we're giving up standing easier than getting down on your knees and praying to God. Uh, but here it is, child of God. The big thing that you're going through in this season that was made to benefit you and not break you. Because God put something on the inside of you that will stand in the midst of adversity, that will stand in the midst of uncertainty, that will stand in the midst of calamity. God has placed his word on the inside of you, and his word is the only reason you're still standing. Somebody ought to look over at your social media neighbor and say, neighbor, thank God I'm still standing. In Matthew's account of the gospel, ministering on a mountain to the multitude. Jesus is preaching one of my favorite sermons called Sermon on the Mount. Watch this. And the reason I love Sermon on the Mount is because, brothers and sisters, Jesus is preaching on a mountain and not a marketplace. Jesus shows us, Sister Shepherd, by his position and his posture, that real discipleship is not done on the stage, it's done in the shadows. And brothers and sisters, isn't it strange how God has changed up the way we do church, but Jesus wants us to understand that if he can preach on a mountain, what's wrong with you preaching from your kitchen table? What's wrong with you worshiping God and giving God praise online? Jesus has slapped us on the wrist because we have turned our calling into a concert. Hear me, child of God. The ministry of Jesus Christ was not based off of a platform, but it was based off of his passion. And Jesus ministered passionately from this mountain. That's why I have a new respect for praise and worship leaders who are coming out and leading worship during this pandemic because they are doing it not based off of a platform, but they're doing it based off of their passion. That's why I have a new respect for some of the leaders in our nation because they're coming out preaching to empty pews because it's their passion and there could be less of a platform. But as Jesus is concluding his he brings it home by sharing the parable about a home manufacturer. Yeah. Jesus is sharing his last point about true and false disciples. And Jesus is looking for people in this crowd who will stand with the Savior and the Scriptures. Here it is. Jesus tells them in verse 24 to be wise and not foolish. Yeah. Watch this. Here, here, here's the parable, brothers and sisters. And I'm almost done. Verse 24. Jesus says, watch this. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams arose and the winds blew against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Jesus makes his point plain and clear by sharing with the multitude that if you want to build wisely, yeah. you've got to build intentionally and intelligently. Yeah. Here's my big idea, church. Here's my thesis statement. Watch this. You can write this down. God's expectations for the elders should encourage every believer to reconstruct their house. Yeah. Yeah. I just said something. I said God's expectations for the edifice yeah. should encourage every believer to reconstruct their house. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you're asking the question. Yeah. I can see you asking the question. How can I reconstruct my house yeah. to stand with the Savior and stand with the Scripture? 
Here it is. Point number one. Jesus says, watch this. You have to comprehend before you can construct. That's good right there. Don't miss that. Jesus says, point number one. You have to comprehend before you can construct. Watch this. Jesus says in verse 24, Therefore, everyone who hears these words and puts them into practice. Jesus wants to know today that there's no middle ground between profession and possession of kingdom life. Yeah. Jesus is saying not only should you be hearers of the word, but you should also be doers of the word as well. In other words, church, you have to learn to learn the word so that you can live the word. I wish I had a witness here. I say you have to learn the word so that you can live the word. And during this pandemic, beloved, I must admit, this is just me, that I got closer to the word than I ever have in my whole life. Because the Bible says that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. The reason I'm learning the word is so that I can live the word. Because I found out that you can't live with grit if you had to learn Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want Your foundation has to be fast. 
reaction to your faith. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good, man. Yeah. The only way that you can stand when storms come yeah. is to make sure that your foundation yeah. and your faith yeah. are fitting with the Father. Yeah. 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 My wife and I are making plans to build a house from the ground up. Yeah. And my wife is very picky on where she wants to build a house. Yeah, uh -huh. You know, she's a Texas girl uh -huh. in the Arkansas world. Uh -huh. and, and, and she's very picky on where she wants to build a house. Yeah. She tells me, Chris, when you're building a house, it's all about foundation. Yeah. Yeah. She told me there are two types of foundation that you can build on. She said that you can either build on a crawl space foundation or you can build on a concrete foundation. She said crawl space foundations are foundations that separate the house from the ground, which makes it defenseless to turn my neck and be compromised by flooding or any kind of moisture. She said you don't want to build your house on a cross space. Yeah. She says, Chris, I want to build my house on a concrete foundation. Yes, yeah. Because the concrete foundation leaves no room for our home to be exposed or endangered by what's under our house. Yes, sir. She says they both have pros and cons. Yeah. But when a ship happens, the concrete foundation will be harder to compromise. And who am I talking to here on today? During this pandemic, your house is shaking. And now you're seeing what you're made of. And God doesn't have time for cross-faced Christians. God is looking for some concrete Christians. Those that can stand when the storm is raging. Those that can stand when trouble comes your way. Those that can stand when the pandemic is on the perimeter. Is there anybody here that can let God know that I'm a concrete Christian? Because there's nothing that can separate me from the love of Christ. Neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation can separate me from the love It's a concrete foundation. That's why you ought to build your relationship with people on a concrete foundation. That's why you ought to build your marriages on a concrete foundation. That's why you ought to build your businesses on a concrete foundation. Because if you build them on a crawl space foundation, that makes ways for people to get all up in your business. But if you're building on a concrete foundation, it's crawled off and people can't. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus lets us know that we have to comprehend before we can destroy. Yeah. Jesus lets us know that our foundation has to be faithful. But then third and finally, Jesus lets us know that we need to rely on the rock. Yeah. Here it is. Jesus tells us about two people. Two houses, two foundations yeah. with two outcomes. Yeah. Jesus says that you can either build your house on the rock or build your house on the sand. Yeah. And the question today is, which one will you choose? Yeah. Right if you choose the rock, then your house will stand. Mm -hmm. But if you choose the sand, then your house will stumble. And I love this word rock. I love this word rock in our text because uh, the Greek word translates to a word called Petra. Yeah. And this word Petra simply means that in our text that this rock is a massive rock. Yeah. This 
rock is solid, stable, and immovable. Yeah. That means that if you build on the petrol, yeah. then you are solid, stable, and immovable. Yeah. So no wonder why we're still standing during this pandemic. Yeah. It's because we have built our homes and our houses and our faith on petrol. Yeah. I remember growing up, me and my sister then, we didn't have a lot of money. So when we got born, we would play games with our hands. Uh, uh, we would play games like thumb war. Uh, 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 we play games like thumb war. We play games like slide. Uh, but one of my favorite games that I played with my sisters was a game called rock, paper,
been blessed by this word. And I want to encourage you, my brothers and my sisters, to reconstruct your house yeah. so that your house can stand in the midst of adversity. Yes, yes. If that's you, my brother and my sister, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I know these are times of high anxiety. Times of stress because millions of people are unemployed. And that stimulus check just ain't cut. God said, don't be a fool in this pandemic. To build your house, build your faith on a firm foundation. You can do that today.
share with you on your way to give. I was seeing people pull up to the church who are still faithful in their gifts. And I'm sure Pastor Dennis appreciates you for coming out. But there's some other ways to give besides coming here in person on Sunday morning during the hours of 10 or 11. There's someone here who will meet you at the door. But there's some ways to give. You can go to our church website www.dsbonline.com You can use our cash app. Dollar sign capital G Game Street That's dollar sign Game Street with capital G Or you can text your donation 209-8894 Then the fourth way you can do it by just mailing it in 1601 South Game Street Little Rock, Arkansas, 72206. Uh, church wanted to be a blessing to the youth ministry as well as the seasoned saint. So we have offered a drawing. We've offered a drawing. And we're going to pick your name. And we ask you uh, that our administration will be, they'll be with you. On that day, they'll meet with you with your information. We have the youth ministry, which is right here. We're going to pick a name. I'm going to ask you to hold that. I'm just going to pick it. And our sister Wanda Holly will be in touch with you and your family. As soon as we pick the name, we have a Visa gift card that we're giving God. The church wants to bless you during this pandemic. I'm going to reach in here. I'm going to be fair. This name that I pulled today. Michelle Hooks in our youth ministry. She's an active youth member. Uh, goes by the nickname Lala. Wanda Holly will be in touch with you and a season saint. Come on, give God praise for all of our season saints. We love you. We love you. Season saint. Thomas Bryant, Thomas Bryant. Give God praise. Bryant, give God praise for you and your family. Uh, Sister Wanda Ali will be in touch with you and she'll give you your Visa gift card. Uh, we want to end it here. We thank you for joining us on this day. Uh, join us Wednesday, Bible study. Join us Wednesday, Bible study, 6 30 p.m. Have your pen and your pad and your Bible so that you can learn a little bit more about Jesus Christ. You're learning to live. Remember that. And thank God that I'm still standing during this pandemic. Give God praise. Thank you for joining us. Join